Okay, so let's go through a very quick knee objective examination as I would sort of do with a patient in clinic and just go through my thought processes as I'm doing that. So first thing I can do is just literally observe the leg, observe the knee. And I'm looking for any swelling, I'm looking for any redness, any change in colour, any lumps or bumps, I'm looking for general position of the patella. I can look for muscle bulk and look for strength around there, whether there's any atrophy of any tissues, whether there's any sweating, whether there's any changes in um, pallor or anything like that. Um, I can look generally in the leg as well, so I can look for scars, so any scars would be uh, significant in terms of things like previous surgeries and things of that nature. Should have got that with your history, but sometimes patients forget, so then we can look at those sorts of things as well. So again, I'm, I can do that in both a, a bent, a straight position, I can also do that in a bent position. So I'm just having a general overview look at the knee before we go into our range of movement exercises. And again, like I've said before in some of my other videos, what we're really looking for is anything major, di majorly different. We don't have to get granular with this sort of stuff. It doesn't have to be you know, looking at every single perfection. Um, it's just looking at generally, is there anything that really stands out as looking different than normal? I'm gonna just look first of all at the knee flexion and extension. So again, Shah, Shah tells me that there's a little bit of issues with this knee, so we're gonna just go quite gentle. And first of all, just for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna try and move my hands out of the way as much best I can. But what I'm gonna do is control the knee and I'm gonna go into flexion and just say, tell me when we get to your limit. And I'm just gonna see whether there's any pain or discomfort doing that, okay? I'm gonna put some overpressure through if I can. Then I'm gonna come back down into extension and I'm gonna say, push down into my hand shaw, good, and then relax. And I'm gonna push down with my hand, so nice and relaxed now, and passively I'm gonna push down and just see a bit of joint play. I can go onto the tibia with my hand, and I can go onto the back of the femur with my other hand, and I can then pull in this direction. Um, so pushing down with my right hand, up with my left hand to check full knee extension. I can very quickly in this position actually have a little palpate through the patella tendon. And I can also palpate into Hoffer's fat pad, either side of the tendon, which I'll go through in a second when we go through palpation, but just simple um, range of movement. So once we've done our range of movement tests, I'm gonna move into um, our quick special test. So for the knee, again, I like a McMurray's, so we'll do that scoopy test for McMurray's. I can then come straight out into some valgus and varus testing, so I can test varus Nice and relaxed, Sean, for me, good. So valgus and varus testing of our MCL and LCL. I can then put the foot down and look at the ACL with an anterior draw. I can then do a quick Lachman's, just letting the leg relax on your leg, and then controlling the femur with one hand, the anterior draw with the other hand, so you've got that Lachman's test. So I've done meniscal testing, LCL, MCL, Lachman's. Obviously there are other tests for these conditions which if you were really considering that condition, you can go into. I've done another video on my channel with all the special tests which you can check out. There'll be a card and there'll be a link in the description if you wanna have a look at that. Um, but for the purposes of just a really quick knee assessment, we've checked meniscus, we've checked uh, ligaments. We can then bend the knee up and we can have a little feel around the patella tendon itself. And again, Hoffer's fat pad, so checking into either side of the knee. Um, and then we can have a little look at the patella femoral joint, so we can just do a compression test through the knee itself. And there's some of your quick special tests that you can do for the knee. Next thing we can test is neurological testing. So if someone was having any neurological signs or symptoms you can do a very quick test of this so again you can use a, a bit of tissue I often as well just use my hands if I'm in clinic I'm doing this really really quick obviously if you really did feel there was something neurological going on and there was any um, discrepancy you could do um, light touch you can also do sharp or blunt and you can do um, hot or cold in all the dermatomal patterns but again, for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna go through quickly what I would often do in clinic. And um, so, Shah, does it feel the same both sides? Yeah. Does it feel the same both sides? Yeah. Same both sides? Yeah. Same both sides? Yeah. 
same both sides, yeah. same both sides, yeah. same both sides, yeah. and same both sides. Yeah. I'm just going through my dermatomes, I'm just lightly brushing with my hands. I always say to patients as well, does it feel significantly different? Okay, so it's not about whether it feels a tiny bit different, it's whether it feels significantly different and that would indicate there was something maybe going on. You could then look at that in more detail. Then we're gonna go through a quick myotome. So if we bring the hip up into hip flexion, can you hold there, Sean, for me? Don't let me bring you down. Hip flexion, then knee extension, hold the shin there, for me. don't let me push you down, good. Then knee flexion, hold there, don't let me push you up, good. Relaxing all the way down. So dorsiflexion neck, so bring the ankle up towards you, hold there, don't let me push you down, good. Big toe up towards you, and then don't let me push the big toe down, good, perfect. I could also do S1 with a single leg calf raise, which I might do in my, sing with my functional test later on. Then I would do a little bit of reflex testing. So again, for this one, just te test the knee jerk first. So nice and relaxed with the leg. Just looking at the knee jerk. Then just bringing the ankle across, relaxing it onto the leg. And then just doing that ankle jerk on that side as well. And all these you're gonna be comparing side versus side. And that's essentially a very quick neurological examination that you can do on the lower leg just to rule out neurological conditions. So palpation in these wise, we've already talked about a few things, but again, you can generally palpate around here. You can do a sweep test. So if there was swelling around here, what you can do is just sweep medially. And then what you would then do is you would push up laterally and you'd be looking for the fluid accumulation to drop down into here. Obviously that would indicate that there was some swelling, how much, there's a grading chart, which will tell you if you have a look at that. What we can then do is palpate, again, generally through the patella tendon. We can palpate through the medial and lateral joint lines. So we're just palpating with the thumbs through the medial and lateral joint lines just palpating the medial and the lateral condyles, and then just generally palpating through the quads as well. So just around that knee anteriorly into the quads, into the medial part of the quads, through rep fem and through lateralis as well. And then you can palpate from here, the back of the knee, so just in this position, just palpating around the back of the knee. I'll get Shah to go onto her front actually for this bit. So if you can to your front, Shah. So again, the, the back of the knee posteriorly, I can palpate into the, the calf, into kind of the popliteal region around here. So this back of the knee section here. So I'm just palpating through that popliteal section and then palpating through the soft tissues and through the hamstrings as well. And again, what I'm just looking for is tension, any pain, any um, particular symptoms that the patient might display and just generally how that feels on the injured side versus the non-injured side. So in terms of flexibility around the knee, there's a few things I like to look at. So obviously you would have already looked at simple range of motion. Then what I would also look at is a bit of internal uh, or tibial rotation as well. So you can look at that in this position where you're internally and externally rotating the tibia just to look at that range of motion. Then what I would look at is hip range of motion as well. And again, just to check, I always tend to check the joints above and below. So I'd be looking at hip lateral rotation, internal rotation, flexion would be the main ones I'd look at with the hip. And just seeing whether there's any major differences from side to side. I can then check for hamstring flexibility. Sure, maybe need some work on the hamstring flexibility. Um, but that's one thing I can check as well. And then in terms of the hip flexors and the quads, I'd usually do that in a Thomas test position, which I'll show you in a second. So hip flexor testing, stretch wise, Thomas test position. So I'd get Shah to hold onto that knee for me. And we just do this and explain to the patient that what we want is a nice flat back into the, the plinth. And um, so we want that to be flat through here. And then with that position, I want you to just relax this leg as much as you can, Shah. So what we're looking for is how high that leg is from the plinth, whether there's any extension in the knee. And then what we would do is a light push down through the thigh and say, does that feel tight through the thigh? Tight yeah, stretchy in the front of that thigh there. Yep, yeah. so we're just looking at that, that front of that right thigh in terms of flexibility. 
I could add a rec fem component to this by basically flexing the knee and that's going to feel probably much tighter and then relax. So you're just looking at one side versus the other. Does it feel flush to the plinth or is there a raising up of that leg in that way? And that's going to indicate there's some tightness in the anterior structures in terms of those uh, hip flexors, the rec fem muscle. And then in terms of flexibility through the side, that would be more of our Ober's test. So then Ober's test, what we would do is either with the knee flexed, or you can do this with the leg straight. Sure, if you bring this leg slightly in front, further in front of you. What I'm going to do is control the pelvis and bring the hip back into a neutral position. And then I'm going to get the patient to drop their leg towards the plinth. I tend to go back towards the edge of the plinth so we can actually get the leg off the plinth and then just push down and see laterally whether that feels tight on the outside structures of the, the leg. And then I would compare that side to side. Now I could do that again with the knee in a flex position and then again pushing down towards the plinth. So I'm looking at an A deduction, so coming down the body so I can see laterally, if someone's got lateral knee pain, Ober's test would be positive. That would be an indicative of some tightness in those lateral structures, which might mean that you need to stretch that out if someone's got ITB pain. The other thing I do with the knee is obviously some quick functional strength testing. So big one for hamstrings I like to use is just a single leg bridge. So if you um, bring this knee off the floor, Shah, for me, and then I'm just going to get you to do a single leg bridge up for me. And back down again. That's good. And again, same thing. And back down again. It's good. So we would check that. I would normally do sort of five to ten reps, depending on the patient. Um, and then check both sides. Obviously, if they can't do that, you can do a double leg bridge, which will be easier. But I like this because again, then you get to see what the good side is like versus the side that's injured. That would be our hamstrings. Quad, we'd be doing a single leg stand test. So come into sitting shot for me. If you stand on your right leg shot and then lift your, yep, yeah, perfect. And then just stand up for me on that one leg. It's good. And then sit down again. So again, this is where I'm much more going to come around the front. I'm going to look at that knee. I'm going to look at whether there is that valgus shift. People talk about valgus being this big, horrible thing. I don't think it necessarily is, but it's something we do want to be aware of and we do want to look at it versus the other side. Because if you've got a big valgus on that side that's painful, then it, it could be a factor. Again, not the only factor and it's not the be all and end all, but it's something we want to be aware of. Um, and we would do one to five reps on that side and then show, do it on the other side. And then back down again. Perfect. So calf-wise, I would look at single leg uh, calf raises. So if you stand on one leg shaft for me, and then just come up onto those toes, high as you can go, and then back down again under control. And then we'll do that five times. So what you would look for is about five reps of this single leg calf raise. Again, you can do more than the numbers arbitrary, but basically you'd be doing that on one side, and then you'd be testing that versus their other, other leg to see whether there was any discrepancies there. So then we can look at lunges as well or split squats. So I love split squats for a variety of reasons. Let's have a, a go, Shah, just doing a couple of split, split squats for me. So you'd be looking at this split squat, doing, let's do three reps on this side. Good. One more. It's good. And relax. Perfect. We can look at normal lunges as well. So if we face that way, Shah, for me. And then what I'm going to get you to do is just a lunge forwards and back. So. And again. Same yeah, no, no, alternating. Nice. And then relax. So have a seat. So then we've got our normal lunges. We've got our split squats as well. And I think those are some really good functional testing for the knee. So they've got a really quick objective examination of the knee. Now I could go into more detail about lots of different things within this examination, but that's a really easy, quick overview and just shows you how quick you can make it. If you just run through these tests really quickly, you're going to have a really good idea of what's going on in terms of diagnosis of the knee. If you want a really extensive full course on musculoskeletal assessment, then I've done a full musculoskeletal masterclass, which is in the description in the link below. So just click on that and you can check it out. That goes through not just the knee, but every body part, it goes through case studies of particularly difficult cases and just talks about all the special tests. Within this video, we've gone through some special tests, but there are other ones that you can do that are useful for other conditions in the knee. But the ones we've done here kind of cover most of our bases really with a classic or a typical knee assessment.
If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and give it a like. You can check out more of these assessment videos and loads of other stuff on physio assessment and treatment. If you want to check out a full video of every special test for the knee, then I've done a video for that and you can click on that just here.